We used to have each other's playlists No, no We used to be each other's best friends Yeah And now we go our separate pathways But your heart's still in mind yeah. Good morning everyone I'm back to my work from home setup now I'm going to start my day with a matcha The Spotify office is known for their matcha latte And it's so good So one day I asked the barista like, hey what matcha powder do you guys use and can you teach me how you do matcha? It's this one. In terms of what's been going on with me, I have been working on my side project. I may have told you about it in other videos, but I'm gonna tell you what it is. So I am building my own business analytics online course. I've been working on this for the past six months, but the idea really started when I realized two things. One is that you all really like the little lesson I integrate in my day in life video where you get to see like a glimpse of the skills before a business analyst in tech. And because of that, which leads me to two, so many of you have reached out to me asking for online resources and courses to take to learn these skills more in depth. When I try to search online for like business analytics courses, I couldn't find one that I want to recommend to you because for business analyst role or like strategy operations roles it's such a nuanced role with a variety of skills like you know strategic thinking business sense logical thinking data analysis building presentations storytelling with data storytelling with presentations and most courses out there only focus on one niche topic and that's when i thought about like okay why don't I just make one myself that encompass all of the skills? After a bunch of brainstorming sessions, I decided to structure the course in the form of a case study because one, it simulates the case study that you will have to do during your business analyst interview round. Like they will give you, you know, thousands and thousands of rows of data, raw data, and will ask you to analyze it, extract insights, come up with business recommendations, and then build a presentation and present it. I think the whole core structure is like, I'll solve the whole case study and then integrate all the skills that you need through it all. But even if you're not interviewing, it also simulates a type of real business problem that I get asked to solve in my day-to-day -day jobs. But yeah, this course is still a work in progress. I'm literally building it as I speak. I know a lot of you mentioned in the last survey that you're non-tech looking to go into tech. I would love to hear more about what you want to see, what you want to learn, what you want to get out of from my business analytics course. You can use the survey in the description box. There is a Chinese version and English version because ultimately this course is for you, not for me. And I want to like kind of give it all to you. It's so scary for me to share this because I don't know how this course will turn out, but I'm sure I'll have a lot of learning from building this from zero to one from scratch and building it with you. So yeah, let me know what you want to see in the survey in the description box. Look how beautiful it is. Oh. Nice. Mm. It's creamy, earthy, and very silky. Highly recommend my matcha powder. Work has been really busy, but at least the matcha is so good. <laughs> Today, I'm working on two key projects that I'm leading. I'll work on the first one in the morning and second one in the afternoon to reduce context switching and keep myself focused. I feel like now that I'm back to New York, I'm definitely getting back to like the working, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle mode. And I feel like it's not just me, my friends around me who are also working professionals in New York City. We always feel this need to like, you gotta work on the next big thing because if you don't, everyone else is doing it. For us, like time becomes so valuable. On that note, I wanna thank Coffee Meets Bagel for sponsoring today's video. I wanna introduce you to Coffee Meets Bagel to any of you who also have busy lifestyles and don't wanna waste your time on people who aren't serious about dating. You guys know that I'm in a relationship, but I have heard just so many of my female friends and even co-workers using Coffee Meets Bagel in New York City to find their partners. Coffee Meets Bagel is a dating app that is exclusively for people who are looking for serious relationships. If you sign up for the app and say you're looking for something casual, the app will recommend you to check out Tinder instead. That's how serious they are about helping you find a meaningful connection. They have very detailed categories for the profile setting and also your suggested match preference setting for better 
their data matching. If you feel like you have more information about yourself that you want to add, you can also add prompts like what terrifies you, what's your ideal date, what kind of new things you want to try, and there are also values you can add such as family, humor, sustainability, etc. With these features, Coffee Beats Bagel suggests you the perfect match without needing you to swipe through profiles of people by yourself. You know how it's always awkward to like initiate that conversation, especially like the beginning kickoff? They have an icebreaker feature where once you match with someone, they have suggested phrases and sentences that can use to help you initiate that conversation. Sharing my personal story, I actually have a female friend who met her now husband on Coffee Meets Bagel. You can click the link in the description box to download Coffee Meets Bagel and start your journey towards a meaningful relationship today. A few days ago, I was asked from my manager's manager to work on answering an ambiguous question with an analysis. Like that say, we need to grow more customers. Can you help me figure out what's the current landscape of our customers and what are the opportunity areas and what the strategies could look like for us to gain more customers? Usually, the executives speak in very abstract language for these ambiguous questions. They won't tell you what the specifics will look like, such as, oh, I need the year-on-year -year growth rate and the demographic split of our customers. That will be on me. My job is to figure out how to think it through logically and then build out a structured analysis. So to show you how I do logical thinking in the context of business analysis, let's say you're the business analyst for YouTube in the US. Your manager asked you to come up with an analysis to understand where and who we should focus our marketing efforts on to grow YouTube premium users in the US. The analysis will be used to prep your manager on her conversation with the head of marketing. So how would you logically think through the question and build out a structured analysis? The biggest mistake is to jump straight into analyzing data because that doesn't showcase your logical thinking and you'll be drowned in a sea of data. Logical thinking for me means showcasing your thought process with all of your logic laid out and with a clear structure. Typically, I like to zoom out, then zoom in deeper and deeper to solve the problem. So first, zooming out to the max, I want to understand what is the market size for YouTube Premium per state. I will assume the market is based on the number of people who have access to a smartphone. Usually, you can make your assumptions or ask other teams otherwise. So I'll look at the number of people who have access to smartphones in each state. The logic behind this is I want to focus on states that have the biggest market size for us. Like if California has 30 million people with access to smartphones versus New York only has five, obviously I will focus on California. It's really important to think through your logic every step of the way like this because these will then become your insights later on when you pull the data. Then zooming in, I want to understand within each state's market size, how many of them are already free YouTube users. My logic is that the barrier to become a YouTube premium user is a lot lower if you were already a free YouTube user. I'm also assuming that from a marketing spend point of view, it's a lot cheaper and easier to convert someone from free to premium versus converting from a non-user to a premium user directly. These two layers give us an understanding of where we should focus on. In terms of who to focus on, I will zoom in a layer deeper and understand within the free YouTube user base, which age group has the biggest size. The reason why I chose to look at it from an age group is because I'm thinking ahead that we can target people based on age groups for ad targeting from a marketing point of view. So age group could directly help the marketing team on the execution phase. Also, building on our previous logic, I want to focus on the age group that has the biggest opportunity size for us. So once I have this logic, then I will let this guide my analysis and pull the data accordingly. So on where to focus on, we can see that California and Texas both have 30 million YouTube premium market size. But given California has a larger free user base at 50 million and its free user penetration is already at 50%, we should prioritize California for free to premium conversion efforts. And for Texas, we can focus on free user growth so we can have a larger pool to convert from later. So now that we've selected the state to be California, we can see that within California, the free user base is driven by 25 to 34 age group. So we should focus our marketing efforts in this age cohort given its size. So our overall business recommendation is to focus our marketing efforts in California and by converting free users to premium users among the 25 to 34 age group. I found a song that is perfect for feeling like a girl boss when you work. I'm gonna show you what this is. It's Golden Hour. You have to try listening to it. 
I am going to make shrimp summer rolls for my lunch and it's so easy. Giant bag of shrimps from Costco. Lettuce I got from Costco as well. This is rice wrap, that's it. It's just three ingredients. But first I'm gonna make the dipping sauce. We need the sriracha. Okay, sesame oil. Oh, it smells so good already. I also put in rice vermicelli. I'm going to cook the shrimp. By the way, I also have a job update. I was recently promoted to a strategy and operations manager from an analyst. I'm still an IC. I don't have people reporting to me. What the manager role implies is more ownership of the project. I'm asked to like lead a project from zero to one and figure out what type of analysis do we do? What type of stakeholders should we get ourselves involved with? And how do we get buy-ins? How do we manage projects? I wouldn't say it's more project, but I definitely have a bigger scope when it comes to leading a project. Honestly, behind the scene of this whole process, it took me three and a half years to get promoted. I think it's a little bit longer than the average, but that's why I want to share with you. Within tech in general, the average promotion timeline is around two years. Why 3.5 years for me? My team went through a reorg and I also changed my manager. So I felt like that may have played a role. It also depends on like the career framework that the company has set for your role. In general, what I've seen in tech is like software engineers and data scientists have the most rigid built out career framework if you're an l1 software engineer you have to do xye skills l2 l3 obviously there are nuances but generally speaking it's easier to pinpoint what are the different skill sets needed but when it comes to business analysts and like strategy and operations in general because our role is so nuanced and we are more so generalist like we don't really specialize in a skill we dabble across different skills it's hard to pinpoint exactly what are the skill sets that you will have to excel in order to get to the next level the past three and a half years it was a lot of me like first of all figuring out what this role really means and i had to design the career framework together with my manager so yeah if there are any things i learned from it is like personal branding at work because business analyst is such a nuanced job like i said i think it's really important to think and figure out for yourself what really sets you apart what are you really good at what do people come to you for my brand at work is I help people think better. As in, you can give me an ambiguous question. I can help you figure out how to think structurally, logically, how to then build out a logical analysis. Based on the analysis, carry out the cross-functional execution with different teams. Try to do this Kagar thing. And honestly, I was really bad at econ. How do I do Kagar in Google Sheet? Basically have to build a mapping. Beginning value, ending value, this number of years. Mm -mm. One sec, I, I cannot listen to music while I do this. Ending value, divide by beginning value to the power of one over time. Okay, minus one. Percentage. So this is essentially telling me that that's it. We have a thousand customers right now, and goal is to get to five hundred fifty thousand in five years. That means every year we need to grow at a growth rate of two hundred fifty three percent year over year. Okay, that's interesting. I learned something new. Um, I haven't thought about Kgar in like since college. Since All right, I'm gonna hop on this call with my teammates and walk them through the narrative. How are you? Typically, I like to put on a call with my team to walk them through my analysis when I'm around 50% done, where they can see the analysis with a clear structure, some visualizations and insights that allow them to provide feedback. It's also a good practice to present your analysis and get a pulse check on the overall storytelling of it. Just finished the call. Um, it was super helpful because then I got some feedback from my team. Structurally, it's fine, but I am adding one more narrative there. I 
I've been like obsessed with this one snack. It's the cheese curls from Whole Foods and it's so freaking good. I think it's better than Hot Cheetos. Since Albert is not working from home today, he's in the office because his team is having an offsite in New York. So I'm gonna text him to tell him, Can you make sure you grab me some cheese curls from Whole Foods today. Thank you. I also got a few new accessories on my desk from Grove Made. Have found stand. This is like a board that props up my keyboard, so it's more ergonomic. A lot of people ask about what this is. This supports my wrist, and I have my trackpad on the left. The board for my trackpad, so I got the angles at a better level. Laptop stand here. I use this as like a computer disc, make safe charging station. I put it on the far left so that it doesn't distract me with work. I'll link all my products in the description box. You can also use my code for 10% off your entire purchase. I'm gonna work from here in the afternoon for a bit. It kind of helps my brain like switch context when I change up my environment a little bit. For this project, it's a cross-functional project. I'm essentially building out like a yearly study about the music industry. I'm leading the brainstorm. So I'm gonna hop on a call in an hour. I just need to think about the brainstorming structure and how to lead it. All right. <sighs> I feel like I still get nervous about running brainstorm sessions or workshops because I feel like it's all on me whether it turns out well or not Hi! Alright, so seems like we have everyone here um, We can get started, I know we only have an hour today But yeah, thanks everyone for joining the call um, The goal of this call is to brainstorm on the type of questions that we want to Ask. I was thinking I can walk everyone through the context, the goal and objective of, of this project so we're all on the same level and then we can go into the brainstorming session. Wait, did you actually go to the You ask me every week look how many I got you. Wait, oh my goodness. You're joking. No. You're joking. <laughs> uh, this, this should last you about one whole week. In Gaoja, in three days, I'll finish them. <sighs> so good. Mm. Uh -huh. Dude, no. That was the involves a banger. It's a bop. That is straight up the lobby. See the railing on the window? That is from the Fort Worth Center no, office. No. I am currently editing my video and it's very interesting that the logical structures thinking that I do at work, I also apply it when it comes to editing my video. Once I load all my footage into my Final Cut Pro timeline, it amounts to three and a half hour of footage because this is so raw and it's just so much fluff. So what I do then is to section it. That way I can see a structure. Go to titles, basic title. I drag, let's say this part is Albert coming home. So this is where the video is at right now. I cut it down to 17 minutes. These are all the sections that I did so that way I can see visually what the storyline is. But yeah, I'm gonna keep editing this. This is my seventh day working on it and I hope you enjoy the video. And I'm also really excited to hear your thoughts about my business analytics course. And maybe we could try it next week.